to episode 7 and 8 of Your ADHD Life, an honest conversation about the highs and lows of living with ADHD. For the next two weeks, my guest, Drew, will be talking about times when symptoms of ADHD are more apparent, how to deal with periods of emotional overload, things that are easy for other people that can pose challenges for those of us with ADHD, both at work and at home, and finally, how to manage some of the low points that come with having ADHD. Enjoy the show. We've talked about some of the emotional pieces being sometimes some of the harder to negotiate, especially when you're kind of depleted. I would say the hardest, but that's... I, I agree. I you know, I leave some wriggle room no, for you to is. comment no, because it is, it, is, it is the hardest. It, I mean, that's one of the things I talk about all the, all the time is that it's ironic that the symptom that is not in the DSM, in the Diagnostic Manual for ADHD, has to do with emotions. And it's for kids and adults, but particularly for adults, it is one of the hardest thing, parts of ADHD to manage. Absolutely. And it's the thing that gets us, causes the most problems. I, I would totally agree. Yeah. And, um, I'd say with emotion communication, right? Yep. So that's yep. that's the other piece that that is a struggle with um, with so many conversations going on internally at any one time and playing through any number of scenarios at any one time. Right. I mean, my wife just stopped asking me what I'm thinking for a while. Because <laughs> I can't tell you everything. Well, right? it's, it kind of is, right? Like I want to uh, answer how many you. tracks are going in your brain. I right? want to answer you honestly, but. Um, there are some dark. You want things. you want just one? There, well, but, you know, again, too, like there are some dark scenarios that oh, play yeah. through at any one yes. at any one time. And, yep. and if you get asked the question at the wrong time, it's like I'd rather not answer right now. Like it's not actually going to happen. Um, but I was just thinking through some some right. not nice some, right. scenarios just to entertain myself, just, just to be like, what would happen if? And right. I wasn't even going to say on camera. I'd be like, oh, that guy is crazy. Um, but and I wouldn't. Say, I wouldn't think that. I would but, have a hard time not saying, "Oh, I thought that too." <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but that's but that's the piece of yeah. you know what happens if, and those kind of mental exercises, I'd say, you know, in in a lot of ways, help me in my current work because it it forces that multi-thread thinking to to look for alternate solutions or best possible path. Right. So that's you know, I enjoy strategy games. I enjoy you know, you know, chess is you know one classic one, um, yep. a bunch of other ones as What's well. What's that chess? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> um, but again, it's multi-thread thinking yeah. where you, you look for small advantages and you try to find... And find you got to think you ahead more than one space. It, yeah. You don't have to, but it helps, right? So right. Right. you can win games without, it's often easier... Depends with, who you're playing. Often easier with. <laughs> um, but that's the piece that I, that I enjoy. Yeah. So it's that multi-thread thinking that can sometimes get into, into trouble. You know, that, that you get into this emotional lack of communication, lost in your own world kind of place... And then reality snaps back in, and it's like, oh, it's 6 o'clock. Right. <laughs> that was a good little fantasy, Oops. right? So if you... In so many ways, like, even in the darkest of times, there's something special about the way the ADHD brain works. And it's, yeah. for me, that level of resilience is the piece that... Um, that I rely on a lot more than I ever thought I would. And I think that's the piece where there's always an upswing. Do you know what I mean? Like that's, do. that's the piece that I think would be, you know, the best sort of offer of like, in some ways hope, but also um, kind of empowerment, right? Because yeah. there, there is always an upswing in that, you know, even in even the darkest of dark times, it's the ability to get back up that, that I just can't shake. Yeah. You know, it's 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 usually a day, sometimes yeah. two, like in the worst of times, it's like three yeah. or four, but but it always comes back around if you just let it. And yeah. that's you know, again for those that are affected by it, like that's the piece that's hard to understand is that it it does cycle back. Yeah. And that's it's so hard. Like that's you know what I mean, like that's the struggle, right? So it it is one where it will cycle back and that even in your darkest of times, like it will cycle back to the upside. And it's that, um, what was it, like the old punching bag things, like with the blow-up ones, like with the weighted bottom? Oh, yeah, you know it was the I mean? clown. Yeah? It was the, yeah. So, like, that, you knock it down, right. and it come back up, and knock yeah. it down, and come back up. 
I mean, in a lot of ways, like that's. I'm gonna find a picture of one of those. Don't put my face on it. I will. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> I used a boppy. It was a boppy yeah. clown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but again, like it, it's that level of resilience that yes. um, I would say, in in the larger sense of things, f almost forces the larger community to be better. Right, so that's what we bring. Like we bring this level of resilience. We we push the boundaries. We will explore things that no one else would ever touch. Right. So the West was not discovered by those that are happy in their little house, like doing their own little thing. You know, inventions aren't discovered. New technology. It's you know, it's people like us that are pressing the boundaries that say not good enough. Yeah. Um, and that are willing to be entrepreneurs. That are willing to be, you know, creating things and working nights and weekends because there's something better out there yeah. and we can like we can taste it like we can feel it like we know it we can deliver it we can we can bring it into the world and we'll fail and we'll try again yeah. and so many others will not even try so well they don't even conceive of it they're just happy that things are easy and exactly there's already a way to do it so maybe that's kind of two things but yeah. it's you know it's, it's the it's the willingness to understand and accept the fact that there will be low points yep. and there will be high points and that's that's the life and in this world and that it's in the lows and the highs that we are able to press press the boundaries and, yep. and press the status quo yep. and for those that are in our life make them a little crazy make them a little crazy <laughs> um, but understand that for I'd say a vast majority it's it's coming from a good place yeah. right that there isn't malice like there isn't um, <laughs> anyway but for those but, that are, yeah. those are in our lives like it just understand that it's not it's not from a place of hurt or a place of malice or, you know, this, that it, it is an internal struggle and that I, I think many don't understand, like, how much hurt there is yeah. within those with ADHD, especially as adults that, yeah. that don't fit and don't feel like they fit and don't feel like they're accepted and yeah. fail and succeed. And One of the big predict. things I say is if you're going to be in a relationship with somebody with ADHD, and in any relationship this is true, but, you know, don't take things personally. Right. You know, and that... To my mom too. I used, to, you know, it wasn't personal when I said I couldn't do it. It wasn't about I was mad at you, right? Or I didn't like you, or didn't want to be with you. It was I just couldn't do it anymore. And yeah, when you're having those low points, it's a brain thing. It's a brain thing. It doesn't feel good to us either. Yeah. So it's not like we're saying, yeah, this is really fun. I'm glad I <laughs> I'm at twenty percent and have nothing left to give and can't like do anything right now and exactly. think my way out. I always say I can't think my way out of a paper bag right now. Basically. Right. So it's not fun for us either, but right, it's, we get used to it in some ways. In I some mean, ways, right? Right. Because it's never know. pleasant, but. But you know there's an upside, right? Right. You know that tomorrow's another day. Right. Um, and they're looking at it from outside. What do I do? You're not available. How right. do I fix you? What's wrong with you? Right. What's wrong and in the me? meantime, I'm annoyed with you because you're not doing what I want you to do and what you said you would do. If you just so. did everything I asked you to do the way I asked you to do it, when I asked you to do it by, we would be great. Right. Right? Right. <laughs> it's that easy. That's how every marriage is, isn't it? And as the wife, oh, no, I'm always right, right? Uh, right. I <laughs> just said I'm always right. <laughs> There you go. And then so, again, with, with relationships as well. Yeah. Like to, to have the difficult conversations to say, in these times, I'm not always going to be communicative, right? That's the struggle. It's something we can work on, but like, understand it's a struggle on both sides, right? right? That you want me to open up at a time where I am clamped down tight. Oh. And yes, I want to be a good partner and I want to have a good relationship and I want to make these things happen, but it's... It's a struggle on both sides to understand that in the lowest of lows, like. Well, and here and here's the, the the difficulty too is that you have to have the energy to have that conversation. It's not going to happen, right? It's not going to happen <laughs> when you're in that. No, nope. right, and that's the hope. Like that's that's the that's I feel like is the eternal trap, which is yes. the spouse or the partner wants to have that conversation then verbalize as the ADHD partner to right. say, oh, I'm feeling this way. I'm having a hard time. Can we talk tomorrow? And those words don't come out. Right. <laughs> they just don't come out. Nope. Or have a really hard time coming out. Nope. Um, Get away from me! Well, as soon as, as soon as I said <laughs> I was like, maybe if you just had a sign. Right. You just hold the sign up. Oh. 
and be like, this time. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? like, well, that's good. Like, have have templates for, yeah, like, have yeah. Yeah, templates for, like, bad, like, basically, yeah. like, we're a sticker. Like, yeah. Having a hard time. Oh, my like, name <laughs> is, right? Instead of. <laughs> having a hard time, it's not your fault. <laughs> we could talk tomorrow. Nice. That's my. That's going to be, that's like, a new bonus. product. That's, that's my your bonus new, thing. There you go. So, a little actionable item, plan in advance. What do you want to tell people when you're, like, shut down and really not going to communicate well? Maybe not something to wear at work. I'd try this out at home first. <laughs> you have a little thing on your desk. Maybe. Don't talk to me. I'm, I'm working. 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 Anyway. I don't know. So, like two cents. That was, I think we got at least five cents out of you today. <laughs> <laughs> True Weaver, thank you very much for joining us on your ADHD life. Thank you for having me. All right, I'm going to hit the button now. All right, bye. <laughs> if you've enjoyed the show, please like us on Facebook at facebook.com backslash your ADHD life. You can find us every week live on Tuesdays at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time on Facebook Live at facebook.com backslash your ADHD life. This is Dr. Kirsten Milliken. Until next time, have fun and find ways to play. <laughs>